This week, I got a lot of likes, hearts, and compliments on my social media. Not because I offered any coaching wisdom or useful information to help people on their plant-based or vegan journeys. I got what might be a record-breaking, well, for me at least, amount of engagement on my Facebook and Instagram posts because I changed my profile picture. I changed my picture. I changed my picture because I finally significantly upgraded my lighting after, I don't know, hundreds of hours of being on Zoom and making videos. And I'd love to tell you about my new light kit that made the most surprisingly flattering difference. But it was exactly the same light. I just moved it about 12 inches, maybe 15. It's a $19 ring light with a desk clamp, so I just kept thinking it had to be over on my left where it could clamp onto the desktop. I kept thinking I couldn't put it behind the monitor because there was nothing to hold it up there, nothing to clamp it to. I kept thinking I needed to figure out a better, newer, different, more expensive light. I kept researching. And then I just moved it. The one I had, about 15 inches. Now you, what ongoing problem could you turn into a solution in two minutes or less? Hello, Veg Heads. You're listening to Veg Your Best, the plant based podcast. My name is Michelle Olander. I'm a certified life coach, a practicing vegan. And if you're ready to press pause on meat, dairy, and eggs to see what that could mean in your life, I'm here to help. Episode 20 What solution is hiding as a problem? So it's true, VegHeads, I changed my profile picture this week. And yes, it was a long time coming and admittedly overdue for a woman who has a public facing position as a life coach. And you know, photographs being photographed, it's not what I would call my zone of genius. It's not my, my zone of comfort. I have spoken on the podcast about my personal self-dare during the holidays to make a short, unscripted Facebook video every day from November 1st to January 1st? Well, listen, I knew my lighting was awful and that I really didn't look that professional or polished, but it was all I could do to just show up and get the video made. You know, it's kind of my message. You veg your best and I video my best. Well, anyway, you do the best you can with what you've got right where you are. So my Zoom lighting has been the source of a number of gentle as well as, well, maybe more pointed critiques from fellow coaches. So about four days ago, well, early January, who knows when you're listening to this out there in the future, but in early January, I was looking at ring lights and halo lights that were recommended by other people who were on Zoom, and they were significantly more expensive. And I was thinking, oh, maybe it's time to up level the way things look here. And it was giving me, well, I was feeling a lot of discomfort about it. I was feeling a lot of anxiety about it. And just moving that cheap ring light to a better spot behind the monitor, honestly, I could not believe it. And apparently from the comments, the hearts, the likes, neither could my friends and followers on social media. You know, I had a thought that, oh my God, getting my lighting dialed in, that it's going to be hard. And actually I had a lot of thoughts. For example, I don't know enough. I don't know where they plug in. I don't know 
how many different lights to have. I don't know what tinted bulbs to have. Uh, it's going to mean asking other people for help. It's going to mean spending money, not knowing if that's even going to fix the problem. Maybe I was thinking, well, two or three times I wrote this in my self-coaching, that maybe I just have a face that belongs in podcasting, not on Zoom calls or in social media. And I was thinking this is kind of vain and frivolous that this is taking up my bandwidth and that my job is to help people with their plant-based and vegan-related goals, not to worry about how I look. Well, I had a billion thoughts, lots of thoughts, thoughts that did not lead me to think creatively or intelligently about fixing my lighting. And even more, I had thoughts that actually led me to overlook a very easy solution. In fact, lots of thoughts actually just validated or reinforced my thought that I'm not good at visual presentation or technology or images. Well, we've talked about that brain looping tendency before, right? That's what humans do. If you think you're a certain way, you're most likely to notice and key in on all the evidence that supports that thought or that idea. And you're likely to discount or even forget about the evidence that is to the contrary. I knew that the ring light optimally should be placed behind the monitor. I knew that. But since it didn't really fit back there, well, I thought one of these days I will find something that fits. And one of these days just happened this week. I was talking to a coach, Jacqueline Gates, who specializes in, among many other things, visual presentation. So I was speaking with her and thinking about what she had said, and my thoughts were a little open after speaking with her. And I looked at that cheap ring light with the clamp, and I thought, I don't know, maybe, maybe I can just prop it up so it stands up and shines on me from behind the monitor rather than from the side. I could do that maybe in the meantime while I figure out what lighting kit to buy. That thought, maybe, just that little wiggled space of possibility, maybe, like I knew it wouldn't work, but I was just thinking, maybe. And I was feeling, I guess, curious, experimental, open. And I propped it up and I turned on that little light and I looked at myself on Zoom and shut the front door. What? It could not be that easy. Listen, I don't care who you are or what you look like. You deserve decent lighting. You deserve flattering lighting. And did you know that you can take a screenshot when you're on Zoom? Of course, you probably did. I didn't. But something occurred to me, maybe, maybe I could try and do that command shift four on my Mac for a screenshot. And it worked. A screenshot of my face with this new flattering lighting. And again, I thought, what? It could not be that easy. So then I took that screenshot and I used it to replace my profile pics on my Facebook pages, my personal one, my Veg Your Best, and the MichelleOlanderCoaching.com. And then my virtual assistant, Nancy Albertson, who is wonderful and whose link is in the show notes, well, apparently she saw it change on Facebook and must have immediately understood the import of this long overdue upgrade to my sites. And without even being asked, she edited out the background, she made the photo cleaner and replaced it on my business pages and Instagram. And this all happened in less than two hours, way less than two hours. So just like Dorothy wearing the ruby slippers 
my all-time favorite coaching analogy, by the way, that power to handle my lighting and image and put together a new headshot, that power had been with me all along. What? It could not be that easy. And all because after speaking with my coach, I just thought, I don't know, maybe. Now, maybe you would never have had any trouble with this issue. Not lighting, not social media, not visual images. Because I admit, this has been an area I have never felt very solution-oriented around. I have never felt very comfortable or confident with photos in my appearance. And that's my habitual way of disempowering myself. But now you, let's talk about you. Where do you perennially stay stuck? Where do you have an item on your to-do list which is overdue, which seems hard, seems tedious, even though you know others seem to do it? What do you keep thinking is too much, too tiring, too time-consuming, too embarrassing, too uncomfortable, too expensive, too awkward? Well, if it's changing the way you eat, if it's changing what you eat, if thinking about food in a different way or maintaining what you want when others are not necessarily on board, or if you're not comfortable asking for the food you want, my guess is that there is a solution at hand. But that solution looks like a problem to you right now. It looks like maybe my poorly placed ring light. And if you try and do a bunch of things to fix it while thinking, this is too much, it's too hard or too expensive, or you need more support or money or advice, you are much less likely to see any solution that's nearby. That's what coaching always starts with. The way our thoughts are creating and contributing to the results we have right now. When you are habitually thinking something's difficult, your brain is not typically trying to prove you wrong about that, unless you challenge it. Unless you challenge it, your brain filters what you see out in the world. Your brain will show you how much evidence there is to support those thoughts you've been having. Unless you give your brain a specific job to look for new results, to create new results. To do that, we need to begin usually with a couple new thoughts, even just slightly different thoughts. We need to ask ourselves maybe why we think those other thoughts. And for me, I love a thought that begins with maybe. Maybe there's a solution. Maybe I do know what to do. Maybe there's a plan that's easy that I'm overlooking. Maybe. So, Like my thoughts about that $19 ring lamp with the clamp base, my coach was challenging me to look at some ways to tweak my imaging presentation. And my brain said, well, that's because I don't have the right equipment. But after speaking with her, something wiggled in that brain of mine. And I came up with the thought, I don't know, maybe. I could prop it up back there. Your turn again. To press pause on meat, dairy, and eggs. Maybe what? Maybe you could cook a few more vegetables. Maybe there's a way to limit how many eggs you eat per week. Maybe you could wonder about vegan bacon just on sandwiches, whether you'd enjoy that. Maybe you ask yourself, What if I ordered the veggie burger when I go to the drive-thru? Or maybe my breakfast could be plant-based on weekdays. Or 
twice a week. Maybe we could try a non-dairy ice cream next week. It's right next to the one I usually buy. Maybe eating plant-based six weeks before my next doctor appointment would change my blood work. I don't know, maybe. Maybe I could ask the waiter what the chef makes vegan that's good. And maybe there's an option on the menu I've never even noticed because I always order the same two things. Maybe I could try a non-dairy yogurt or maybe a non-dairy cream cheese on my bagel would be good. Maybe my spouse would even help if I tell him I'm worried about my cholesterol or his. Maybe I could eat vegan just until dinner time. Maybe. Maybe. That's what the veg your best method is at its core. It's a few minutes of maybe. It's a regular practice of maybe, where we get a chance to think about our habitual thoughts and how those habitual thoughts can derail or complicate our new plans or goals or the ideas we want to bring into the world. I help my clients see how close or how far they are to begin with from a whole food, plant-based diet. And I think of this like when you punch in your destination into Google Maps or your car's GPS. The software needs the destination, yes, of course, but it also needs to know where you are right now. The route, the route can change. The route depends on traffic or weather, construction, accidents, or whether you suddenly need to stop somewhere or pick someone up. You know, the route is generally flexible, but it's essential to know where you are and where you want to go. And it's also important, I think, to know why. I help my clients get really clear on their why, the reason they want to make any changes in the way they eat. If you eat a standard Western diet and you or your doctor have been thinking that moving towards a vegan or a plant-based diet could help with chronic health issues, inflammation, managing blood sugar, weight loss, gastrointestinal issues, blood pressure, Well, your brain might even get very excited to start and read all the books and watch all the documentaries and buy all the plant-based pantry items. But then, if you're normal with a normal human brain, your default habitual thoughts about food, cooking, convenience, and health will most likely start chattering. Because doing things the way you've always done them, well, yes, it is easier in a way. At least your brain says it's easier because, well, I don't know, what if you don't like it? Or what if your cholesterol doesn't come down fast enough before the doctor's appointment? And maybe it's your genetics and food doesn't matter. And what if the family doesn't even want to eat that way? And what if you don't keep it up? And what if everyone makes fun of you or What if you feel disappointed in yourself when you can't keep it up? And why do you even have to change the way you eat? It's not fair. And now cookouts or restaurants or travel or parties will be no fun. That's your brain. It's going to do that. It's important that you know that going into any new endeavor, your brain will do that. Brain's gonna brain. That's what I help my clients do. Notice when that cave woman brain is just arguing for her limitations, for her stuckness, for her that's just how I am-ness. And when her CEO brain has a goal, a plan, an initiative, well, I spoke with a client the other day who said, please don't leave me alone with her. She met her brain. 
her cave woman brain, the part of her brain that was telling her she was too old to change her way of eating, that it probably wouldn't make any difference, and there were too many people who weren't on board. I know. I get it. I felt the same way when I stopped eating animal products. I didn't really want to tell anyone. I didn't think I would be able to stick with it. I thought it would, well, I thought it would annoy my family, especially my husband. I thought it would make travel and socializing more difficult. I thought people would think it was a fad or just a way of being extra. I don't know, is that the right way to use extra? Like just too much high maintenance and dramatic. You may think that going plant-based or vegan is for young people or celebrities or ultra-liberals or people who cook sourdough bread from their own starters and ferment sauerkraut in the basement. But moving towards a plant-based vegan diet is one of the most empowering things you can do for your health as well as the health of your family, the health of the planet, and yes, not least of all, for the animals. And there are more and more people like myself who have come to this realization in midlife, well, in my case, a little over past midlife. So if your brain is telling you more about the problems of pressing pause on meat, dairy, and eggs than the benefits, I want you to know, first of all, that that is completely normal. Your brain is just good at noticing what's not working, like my $19 ring light with the clamp base. I encourage you to make a discovery call with me. Sign up on my website, michelleolandercoaching.com, or email me at info at michelleolandercoaching.com. Those links are in the show notes. And tell me, let me know what's standing in the way of you eating the way you want to eat. What's standing in the way of you pressing pause on meat, dairy, and eggs to see how that could change your life? I guarantee there is a way to get you started vegging your best right where you are today. Veg Your Best podcast production, music, and editing by Charlie Weinshank. Thanks, Charlie. Before you go, it would mean so much to me and the Veg Your Best team if you would hit subscribe, leave us a five-star review, or share with someone you think might be interested. Something about algorithms, it helps bump us up a little in the rankings, and that's the best way to help others find the podcast and for us to find our audience. So until next week, make it easy and veg your best.